I'm Jeff Yager. I'm a professor of chemistry, biochemistry, and physics. And I'm Vladimir Mojica. I'm professor of chemistry at School of Molecular Sciences. So, Vladi, making another video today looking at um, chapter five in uh, Physical Chemistry for Life Sciences, edition number two. And in this chapter, they're really going through uh, electrochemistry and, and its relation to biochemistry. And, um, you know, while a lot of the chapter is spent introducing, you know, electrochemical cells, how electrochemistry, in a sense, uh, real, phys you know, uh, life cells end up causing uh, real electrochemical type ion flow, uh, potential across membranes, et cetera, et cetera, which are very critical to, to bio, I mean, biochemistry, is very critical on electrochemical processes, ion mobilities and stuff like that. But uh, the one today um, starts with water. And I don't think it's wrong to, you know, spend a little time there because while a lot of times when we're dealing with electrochemistry, we're dealing with ions, it's almost always in a media of an aqueous solution. And almost everything that we start with starts with water itself having conduction, water itself having ions associated with it, et cetera, and that being the media to dissociate other ions and see their flow and behavior as well, right? So uh, the question it asks is to describe the mechanism of proton conduction in water. Um, and so, um, you know, I think everyone has a sense that water in the liquid state, you know, has um, hydrogen bonding and, you know, has some different properties. You know, it is more dense, you know, than its associated solid that even in the liquid state, you have a high degree of cooperativity and association in the water molecule. And you have things that are, in a sense, these protons are exchanging across things, right? Yeah, so perhaps just by looking at this picture, there is something interesting here. If we were to ask, is the mechanism of proton conduction simple diffusion, random diffusion? And that's what you, usually a lot of ion, I mean, if you think of ion conductivity or ion diffusion, how electrons get from one place to the other with in a molten salt, right, or something. You think of it as hopping onto some ion and transporting the salt. And so it's diffusion limited. And so diffusion it goes- Diffusion limited and to some extent random. Random, exactly. Whereas this guy is directed. It, it's showing you- breaking information. Yeah, it's showing you a very cooperative behavior. Exactly. And this is a huge difference. So, Proton transport in water is a collective phenomenon. It's, it's not a particle independent thing. It uses the whole structure of water. And, and this, is, this is why this is so remarkable. You, we might have the same thing in any system having hydrogen bonds. So this would be the same system for proton transport, very similar if we had liquid nitrogen. Because there too, hydrogen bond is very important in liquid nitrogen. In uh, ammonia. Yeah, a liquid ammonia. There we go. Sorry. There's something that, that actually has a proton. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. No nitrogen. NH3. Yeah, yeah. 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 Things where, or, or the way I like to think about it here is, you know, there's only certain times when, uh, you know, when protons are attached to something, whatever X is, you know, certain times these Xs, typically when it's an electronegative, it allows this proton to exchange or to have a low enough inner, that bond to easily break and reform, et cetera. Like you said, with things like nitrogen, oxygen being, of course, what we're uh, talking about here, et cetera, fluorine, um, et cetera, where you can have a lot of these dynamic, you know, hydrogen type mobilities. While famously in something like carbon, you often don't get, right. you know, any, uh, hopping of that, in, any exchange is what I guess I would call it. Yeah, therefore. and it's also quite interesting that this type of chemical bond, this hydrogen bond, is extremely important in DNA because this is how 
the sugar base is connected to another one. Well, think of all three of what I think of as, if somebody asks me biochemistry, the three classic biopolymers or, or you know, uh, s components that form polymers that, that make up life. You think of carbohydrate sugars, you think of amino acids, proteins, peptides, and you think of nucleic acids, right? Um, all of them have a hydrogen bonding, a major component of what makes them special is their hydrogen bonding capabilities, right? Yeah, and it's also that this hydrogen bond, you know, th this is one situation because this is the lightest uh, nucleus, then a uh, tunneling, which is a, it's a, it's a People... pure quantum phenomenon, it's also present there. And this is a lot of what is now a very vogue field of quantum biology. You see a lot of the heart of that being at these idea that you get proton, you know, or you get some type of tunneling behavior, whether it be electron, proton, something in biological, whether it be polymers or other type systems. Right, and what I wanted to, to insist is that tunneling is the process the simplest description of tunneling, it's a quantum particle going through a barrier. A barrier. And yeah. then what happens is that this process is classically forbidden because in this region, if you, if you add the energy kinetic plus potential, in this region, it will be kinetic energy negative. And since kinetic energy is one half mv squared, the mass is positive, V squared is positive. This is not possible classically. Right. Now, this process is extremely important when you have, as you said, hydrogen connected to two different nuclei. And then this a proton can move one direction and also long range tunneling. So it turns out, as you're saying, proton conduction it's not the same as electron conduction, but proton is probably the only case where you can have an important contribution from tunneling because of the fact that the mass is relatively small because for large- And it even gets massive. tested very um, you know, explicitly because of uh, the ability to control isotope you know, in, in hydrogen. You know, in fact, famously, hydrogen is the only element where the isotopes have a name. You know, they have a name, deuterium, tritium, et cetera. Right. And, and so you can look at deuterium, which is another stable isotope, but has twice the mass, and even see how that mass plays such an important role in, in a sense, you know, eliminating tunneling behavior when you start getting higher and higher masses. Right. So. And, and the other thing is that this transport mechanism, it's very different from what would happen in, uh, uh, you know, across the membrane of a cell, because then the material inside the cell is not necessarily water as such. And, and then, the, <coughs> then we have to understand that protons carry electric charge and, and that these channels in, yeah. in the, they are, they are ion channels charged. are so ion important in biological right, systems. Right, right, right. Yeah. So then, in, in our bodies, this ion, which is so extremely important, it travels in different ways. It is transported in different ways, depending on the rest of the, of the material medium he's going to. Yeah. Through. Yeah, I even see this firsthand in, in some of my research where you can look at, you know, hydrogen is 1H is famous, a proton is famous to be able to look at in, in magnetic resonance. It's the basis for all MRI measurements is just looking at relaxation or diffusivity of water um, and its behavior. And that gives the entire contrast mechanism for MRI. Um, and, you know, in... Uh, looking at it more chemically or spectroscopically, you can, you know, you, you see that if you look at how the oxygen moves versus the uh, proton, it's significantly different, you right. know, because the oxygen is much more classical in its diffusion, you know, uh, having a much higher mass. And, and it's the proton that is able to undergo these cooperative exchange mechanisms. Right. And now you mentioned something that is quite beautiful, that, of course, the, the proton has this electrical charge. But you see the nucleus of hydrogen has another very interesting property. 
that he has a magnetic moment. And it is this magnetic moment, but actually what is so important in giving the magnetic resonance signal, and that's how you can follow this type of nucleus, and you won't be able to follow something in which the magnetic moment of the nucleus is zero. Right. But so, then it, it's actually even, you know, since this is my field I love so well, much. This is, like this is what I'm tempting yeah. you. Yeah. So, I mean, but it's, it's even more beautiful than that in that all three, right? Like all three um, isotopes. isotopes of hydrogen all have a spin that you can follow in magnetic resonance. This one being the classic fermion. You know, this one being a classic spin one boson, and this one coming back to a nice spin one half that actually has a gyromagnetic ratio or, or a gamma higher than proton. So it's actually more receptive in a magnetic field. It, it has the highest one. It, you just tend to not work with tritium for a lot of reasons. Right, you know? right, right. Um, yeah. So, well, I think hopefully this gives everyone at least some idea of the enthusiasm you and I have, as well as anyone for, you know, this type of general discussion, because really understanding at a fundamental level, water and its really interesting properties and what makes it interesting from a fundamental quantum mechanical and kind of molecular standpoint, I think is, is a great way to start, you know, an electrochemical chapter and, and a great way to, to build up the molecular level into life systems and life processes. Right. So thank you. Yeah.